Right, hello there ladies and gents. Welcome to another repair video. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to my usual repair videos. This is a PlayStation 5 as you can see and it's a warranty job. So I thought I'd document my process for how I handle warranties because I think it's an important topic for any repair business when you're doing repairs for customers. So this particular console was sent to me a few months ago, about two months ago I believe and the HDMI port was damaged. I think this one had trace damage, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this one had trace damage. I repaired the HDMI port, I got it all working, and the customers got back and said that the port has snapped, which is really weird, because ports don't normally just snap. So apparently it's just snapped and it's been sent back for warranty. So I'm going to inspect it first of all, I'm going to have a look inside the HDMI port, just see if I can see any damage, but as long as I can't see any visible damage to the port itself, then this will be treated as any normal warranty where the customer will get the second repair for free because the warranty should be on me to basically repair it for free if it goes wrong. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you're notified whenever I upload. I'm also streaming on Twitch, so if you want to check me out over there, I oh, know, I know, some people don't like Twitch, but if you do want to check me out over there, there'll be a link in the video description. And if you're feeling really, really generous and you don't want me to have to rummage through dustbins to find food, then you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then you can subscribe to my channel. Absolutely free for you, but it gives me $2.50 every month to help me buy some food. <laughs> but that being said, let's get into the video. So I'm going to inspect this under the microscope and just see what's going on because I can see something a little bit weird inside there. Okay, so looking inside the port then, I can see a little bit of wear and tear, but I'm not seeing anything which would be the user's fault, I don't think. So I'm not sure what this is down at the bottom. It's a little bit of gunk by the look of it, but it's very strange how the port has basically snapped. I mean, look at that. But it's very strange how the port has just snapped like that. That's not normal. So I'll take it apart and I'll see what's going on, but it looks like these front legs have snapped. Uh, I don't think this is going to be the user's fault. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be the user's fault. Maybe not quite enough solder went down into the ground legs. And that could potentially have caused it. I've only ever had this once before. So it's a little bit strange, really, like how that's happened. All right, so I'm going to get this taken apart. I'll fast forward through this process because it's fairly time consuming. But I'll get it taken apart and then I'll take it from there. Here we go then. So the one problem with warranty repairs is you know you're not getting paid, which is fine. It's just one of those things that happens. But the PS5 has so many screws. It has so many screws and it takes so long just to get into it. And then you got to reassemble it as well. You know you're not getting paid for it, which is the annoying part. But never mind. Let's have a look at this. Let's see what's going on. That is very strange. So if you take a look here, the port has come out. I'm not going to bend it too much. I don't want to damage the traces. But the solder's still there. It's very, very weird. The solder is still there, but the port has come out. So it could have been a defective port, maybe. It could have been a weak port. I'm not going to make excuses. It's my job to rectify it. But it is very strange. Well, I don't think it's a problem that the, cause, that the user's caused. So I'm going to heat it up from the top because the legs are snapped on the bottom, which means that I need the top pins to melt. So I don't mind about melting the port because I'm not going to be reusing it. Okay, so that come off very, very easily. Actually, no, it's not even a defective port. So that's very weird. It looks like it's just the solder's just not pushed all the way through. And it has taken a trace with it as well. So now I've got to put another trace on there. This is obviously my issue, not the customer's. So I'm going to get this port replaced. So the next thing I'm going to need to do then is I'm going to need to clear out these ground holes. So I'm going to use hot air and the solder sucker for that. This solder sucker I've actually had now for over 10 years. So there's the ground holes cleared out. Let's have a look under the microscope. And yep, everything seems fine there. Okay, everything seems fine on this side. But this side, as you can see, it's not great. So it's taken out a couple more traces. I've just looked at the port and there was no trace on the port for the ground pad. So I think that was probably missing anyway. But it has taken out two more traces when the port's been damaged. Which, to be fair, I mean, that could have been weak anyway. I don't know. I can't actually remember. One trace that I did originally put there is fine. So I'll reuse that trace. But I need to run jumper wires for these ones as well. So I'll just expose the traces so as i can get something to solder to ah, i remember this one now this is one where it took out this trace as well so this board's seen some damage i remember this one very well 
so like I said, this is an issue that I have to deal with, not the customer. It's important to remember that just because it's unusual, it doesn't mean it's impossible. Yes, it's unusual for a port to just fall out or snap, but it's not impossible. And it does happen from time to time. And when you deal with the amount of consoles that I deal with, you're bound to come across that sort of thing and you're bound to have to deal with warranty jobs at some point. I'll just clean that away just to make sure we've got a nice clean working surface. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some flux on the board and I'm going to tin those two new pads which I've created. And in fact, I'm going to tin the rest of the pins as well. So let's just add flux all over. So I'm not bothered about that second pin across because that's a ground. I'm just going to tin these two pads. And now I can drop a new port on and then just simply run a couple more new jumper wires. So I've got a brand new port here. And I'm just going to tack it down. So what that means is I'm going to press down on the port. And then with the soldering iron, I'm just going to tack a couple of pins down so as I can hold it in place. That way then I know it's in position for when I solder in the ground legs. If we're soldering in the ground legs from the back, we don't know if it's in position. So I don't really care whether there's any bridges or not yet. I'm just going to tack it down in a couple of spots. Just make sure he's going to stay there. And that way then, I know that the port is nice and flat. So with that done, you can see that the ground legs are coming all the way through. So I know that the port is in position nicely. So I need to do the same again now, but with the ground legs. So I'll add some flux. And then I'm going to solder in the ground legs. So one key to doing through hole components is to heat up the component and the pad at the same time. Because you want the solder to flow onto the pad and the component to make sure that it's going to solder properly. So you can see I'm very visibly putting pressure on the ground leg, which is fine, it's just the ground leg. It doesn't matter if it bends slightly, as long as I know that I'm putting enough pressure on so as the solder is going to bond to both the pad and the leg. And then one thing I can do to make sure that it pushes all the way through is if I just use some hot air. And the hot air, along with the soldering iron, is going to make sure that the solder pushes through to the other side of the board and make sure that we've got enough solder there. Beautiful. Okay, so now I can tackle the pins. So I'll just add some more flux just to make sure we've got enough. And then these couple of little blobs of solder, I'm going to use those to drag across all of the pins including that jumper wire that I've already put down, or rather the last time I worked on it. I'm just going to make sure that we've got a nice amount of solder on each pin, and also make sure that it bonds to the pad with a nice smooth joint. So you can see that there's a couple of pins that are not quite soldered properly. We don't want to leave them like that because we're going to end up with issues later on down the line again. We don't want this to come back again. So just make sure that there's enough. And then what I can do is just give all of these pins a nudge. And this jumper wire you can see is moving with the pin, which means it's soldered, and the rest of them will just nudge to make sure that they're soldered properly. Those two are missing. Pin two is missing, and the rest are soldered. Alright, so now I'm ready to run some jumper wires. So I've got some enamel wire here. This is 0.1 millimeters. It might seem a little bit small, but in terms of jumper wire, it's fine. And I'm going to run a wire to there, just tack it into place, and then I can come in with the tweezers and solder it properly. Just so like that and then tack it down on the other side where I expose the trace. So once you've exposed enough of the core of the jumper wire, you're going to need to come in and just drop a bit more solder there just to make 100% sure that it does bond. And also I'm going to redo that one on that side. Uh, I'm going to melt this flux a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. The problem with flux is it burns up pretty quick and you end up not being able to see what you're doing. Because of the soldering iron, a little bit of singed plastic. Just get that into position and then add some more flux. Make sure we got a nice bond on that. Same with the pin side and then I can trim the excess wire. I'll just break that away and then I can do the next one. And break the excess away. And then I can check these wires to make sure that they're all good. They do appear fine. So that one appears to be soldered to that pin properly. And that one to the one next to it. Okay, that's good. I'm going to make sure that we don't have any shorts to the ones next to them. So we've got continuity there. Continuity there. No continuity there. No continuity there. 
and no continuity there. Good, so that means that we have successfully run the jumper wires without shorting out to any pins next to it. I'm just going to make sure I've got no bridges on the other pins. We don't want to turn this on if it's got bridges. So I'll just check one pin against the one next to it. Ah, uh, what do you know? We have a bridge. I've just seen that now. Didn't see that to start with. But there's a small bridge there. And that would have shorted out data line 3 and 4. Or rather data line 2 and 3, pin 3 and 4. So that's why I always check with the multimeter, just to make sure. Even if it looks fine. I didn't see that until after it started beeping and I looked a little closer. Awesome. Everything appears good. Let's just dry that off a little bit. And the remainder, I'm just going to dry off with a cotton bud. Soak up that IPA. Right then, so that's good to go. Oh, I've made sure there's enough solder on the ground legs and everything seems fine. So I'm just going to clean up this part of the HDMI port on the back and then I'm going to call it good. Hopefully, we're not going to have any further issues. So to clean up now, what I want to do is just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush. And the reason for that is because I want to clean inside the port as well, because whenever you do a HDMI port, you're going to get flux inside the port and that will cause con connection issues. Clean inside the port with the toothbrush, make sure it's nice and clean and ready to go. So all I need to do now is just reapply some fresh liquid metal and then get it back together. So I'll just make sure that there's enough on there. And the same with this side as well. We need the two parts of liquid metal to bond. So I'll just spread this out as well. There we go. Beautiful. Pop that back in there. Check the alignment. Perfect. So now I can get it back together enough for testing. Just make sure it displays fine. And then we're good. So that's enough for testing. I'll plug in a power cable. Turn it on. So we've got a blue light. And that cable might be bad because the screen is flickering. This cable, as you can see, I've melted it. So that was bad. But as you'll see, we now have a display, which means that this console is working again. So for the purpose of the video, I'm going to leave it there because obviously it's going to take me a long time to reassemble this. I do need to give it a full test as I would normally with any other repair. I'm still going to give it a full test and things. But for the repair that it came in for or the warranty that it came in for, that's been solved. Obviously, the customer cannot be to blame for a HDMI port snapping and falling out. That's my fault. I obviously didn't put enough solder through the ground holes and that's a lesson learned for another day. But obviously, by just replacing the port again, I've had to replace a couple more traces because they would have been weakened from the initial impact damage and then weakened again and damaged because of the port coming out. So I've replaced another couple of traces and it appears to be working fine. It appears to be in 4K and it should be absolutely fine. So happy days. I'm happy to call this done. Uh, so yeah, I hope that gives you an insight into when and how we should handle warranty repairs. Hopefully it'll help you deal with that kind of situation in the future. But that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer. If you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by using the website address in the video description. You can check out the prices and also get a custom quote as well by using the contact us page or you can book in your repair and just send it in. If you want to support the channel, if you enjoy what I do, then you can become a Patreon supporter using Patreon link in the video description. You can become a channel member using the join button down below the video or you can head over to Twitch, link your Amazon Prime account and subscribe on Twitch using Twitch Prime. I also accept donations as well. There'll be a direct donation link as well as a PayPal email address in the video description as well. So if you want to support me that way, by all means, I'm more than happy to take your money. <laughs> but that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I really, really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.